briefly I want to share with you on the resurrection as proof and reward please take note it's going to be a teaching the resurrection as proof and reward and I'm going, to, I'm going to start by talking about two levels of attack. Two levels of attack against the, mini, the mystery of Jesus. I didn't say the ministry of Jesus. I said the mystery of Jesus. Two levels of attack. Two levels of attack. Against the mystery of Jesus. The mystery of our salvation in Christ. But we're going to talk about the resurrection as proof and reward for those who listened to me yesterday especially so i'm not going to do go into details of many things because i have been doing teaching otherwise we will not live here today and i'm not i just hate to even stay longer than another one hour and we need time to sing so i will not talk much about the things that I'd already taught. Just going to say a few things. But before I talk about the resurrection as proof and reward, let me pray with you. Can you rise? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the words that are coming from your servants bring me personal experience. Pray that prayer personally. Just Bring me personal experience in redemption. Bring me personal experience in salvation. Bring me personal experience. Personal experience in healing, in deliverance, in breakthrough. Lord, let today not be about my feeling. Let today not be about my capacity. Let today be about your plan, what you want what you planned for your people. Let today be a reward for your servants, Jesus, who obeyed you unto death. Let today honor you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, say, I am blessed. My mind is opened to receive from God and to receive of God and to become of God. In Jesus' name, MMB that take up your notes. The media can make available all the teachings during the camp. All the teachings during the camp. The media try. And people, please check with the media and see how you can catch up. Let's talk about two attacks. Let's talk about two attacks. Two attacks on the mystery of Jesus. Number one is the attack against his death. Number one. I told you we'll be teaching, so follow me. Let's do a brief teaching this morning. Take something away as a souvenir. The attacks on his death. Secondly, the attacks on his resurrection. <laughs> The attacks on his birth, I mean on his death, and the attacks on his resurrection. But if we are to stretch forward and lean backward, we will discover that the birth of Jesus was attacked also. Serious attack. So the mystery of the incarnation was attacked. For those who want to stretch their imagination and their interpretation of the scripture, the fall of Lucifer from the heavenly throne may be associated with the decision. The decision for sonship on earth. And I don't want to go into that. The plan of the almighty father that the son will rule the earth. The son in the flesh will rule the earth. That means the mystery of the son, the mystery of the son that will eventually bring Jesus Christ as the son of God was the reason why the brightest of the heavenly, the brightest among the heavenly hosts had to lose his place in the heaven. And at his birth, physically, you can see that there had to be controversy. The angel had to help, had to help Joseph to be in alignment. 
And at his birth, Herod had to kill so many sons because they wanted him dead. Like they wanted him dead. But that's not what I want to talk about. Let's talk about the attacks on his death because that's the immediate subject matter in Easter. The attacks on his death and his resurrection. Number one, the attacks on his death is directly the responsibility of the devil. The second attack, which is about his resurrection, is still the devil, but not directly, using the instrumentality of the authorities of the Jews, the mindset and the religiosity of the Jews. Please just follow me. It's a teaching. Let's look at the first attack, the attack on the death of Jesus. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. If you are following, say following. Come on, come on. If you are following, say following. If you are receiving, say receiving. If I should go ahead, say go ahead. go ahead. Praise God. Those who did not say following, they shout go ahead. No, make it sing what I mean. Okay, go ahead was louder than following. I took note of that. Let's continue. Luke's Gospel chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Luke's Gospel chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. That is so normal. Everybody is aware of that temptation. Command this stone, let it become bread. We learn it in CRK or in BK or whatever it is. But what is at stake there is deeper and deeper and deeper. What is at stake here is before Jesus would begin his ministry, the devil had gone ahead to stop him or to suggest to him he should not die. He came as the bread of life and in order to be the bread of life, he had to give his body a sacrifice. But the devil is saying, not your body. Command this stone. A diversion of attention from obedience to the plan of the father for an easy option. Say easy option. Yeah. Everywhere, every time, every, everywhere on, on earth, every season, every people, wherever you find, in this congregation, every, every line, every column, every whatever, the temptation is seek easy option. One of the greatest baits with which the devil ensnares believers and, Christ, and humanity in general Easy option. Easy option. So couples abort their children. Abort intentionally because they want easy option. Ima, we are not yet ready for this poor baby, Amy. Ima, you are here, but you are Let's just let's just settle in. Love, we are not yet ready for this baby and we are crying, you know. You know, we have this to pursue, we have that to pursue, we have this to pursue. So, let's let this one go later on. Yes, it's as beautiful as that. A destiny, a world, a plan from God is flushed out for the man and the woman to have it a little bit easier. That's how the devil works. <laughs> So if you have been involved, that's it. <laughs> In ministry, you can never fulfill ministry without passing through this, the gates of this temptation. The greatest temptation you will meet in ministry is that don't give of yourself, give of things. Because giving yourself means you will die. It means... You will die to your pride. You will die to several things. Being a minister means you die daily for others to live. The devil tells you, 
must you go through all of this? But just give them things. You know, a lot of abracadabra in ministry. Because there are easier, easy way out. If you come here and I just, just stand here and make sure almost everybody in this house falls. For you, God was in church today. Right? Whether anybody has seen God or not or loved God or served, it doesn't matter. It's so easy. If that is what you want. Just so easy. It's manufactured. One of those walking around me, the father, and when I'm talking about the father, is what she's aware of. Before she met Christ, she used to be part of the industry. One of those walking around me. The father gives things to people here in Aquaibum State. Pastors, they line up to get things from the father to make things happen. You know, we call to give people prophecy and to see the father. And the father attacks her every day. Attacks her every day because she's no longer in the industry. She says, you are the only one who has the capacity to understudy and learn and perhaps inherit the industry. How dare you abandon it? Easy option. Easy option. Prosperity gospel is an easy option. So you come every day, we are talking about the good life, money. The Lord will bless you with money. It's so easy. Command this stone to become what? Bread. As a parent, ma, listen to me. Everybody should listen to me. Listen to me. As a parent, you must either fall for this temptation or pass through and succeed and triumph. Because as a father, as a mother, every day the devil is telling you, who will eat them to turn the door? So you see people who give birth, they will not breastfeed their children because they don't want to lose them. I'm sure you want me to say something. Maybe say. Uh, so you think I, I am also growing in civilization. I have stayed with you for long enough to start knowing certain things. That I'm not supposed to say certain things, right? So, <laughs> praise God. Dr. Ekpo too is very happy. He's very happy that I've not said anything. <laughs> I've grown. I'm just interacting with you, you are civilizing me. But you know what I will have said, right? You know, but you understand what I mean. So, how can I breastfeed? How can I breastfeed? And... Recently, we talked about a great young man who loves God, who wants to marry a great, beautiful woman, who runs the world, who, who flies internationally, and all of that. The only problem we have that this man is expecting children. He said, no, I cannot lose my form. I cannot lose my form. Carrying pregnancy will rob me of my form. And some, some people cannot have children because it will rob me of one full year of my life. And you mean I don't do anything? Just sit down and be pregnant? And after that, I just, no, 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 no. Aria is not yet ready for Toro. If you understand what I'm talking about, can I see your hand? Yeah. And for those who have children, they raise them like pigs. They come to see them later in the evening. Give them, have you given them, them formula? Yes, give them formula. Formula A, B, C. Raise them like rabbits. Let it cost you nothing. Let it, leave, let it leave no mark on you the way you raise your children. I once had an, a conversation with somebody I respect so much, one of my brothers. And he said, good men have bad children everywhere. That being a good man doesn't mean you have good children. <laughs> I kept quiet because there are certain people you talk to, you are not supposed to know too much. Look at when you have your kambawo. Thank God he's not listening to me. He does not know. Being a good man doesn't mean you are a good parent. There are bad people who are good parents. Bad people want to marry good women. Look for good people to take care of their children. After robbing, they come and sit down with their children and, and have very wonderful time. Raising their children, love them. Their children have wonderful values. So, I mean, we saw you, you know, case Romo, but for you, you know, there are bad men who are good parents. There are bad women who are good parents. 
and there are very good men who are hopeless parents they don't want to die they don't want to give up anything now that uh, that's how it works so that temptation was not just oh, do, do, command this stone to become bread means don't die don't give yourself let it cost you nothing to save the world do a bragadabra make them see miracles give them food all the time that's why Jesus Christ gave them bread in John chapter 6 the next time they came they, want, they wanted to forcefully make him a king make him a king because people want free bread that's what the devil wanted don't teach them the truth don't teach them the truth so that you don't lose popularity so that you don't lose followership let everybody love you let everybody love you let everybody follow you let everybody honor you don't, let, let there be no dividing line the kind of Christianity we have now a new age Christianity that anybody can be a Christian because everything is free God has done everything you pay no price you do 419 you do a yahoo yahoo it does not matter you can be an elder and it's comfortable you are saved by grace not by yahoo and being you doing yahoo yahoo no matter how many people die because of your fraud it will not cost you your salvation that is commanding the stone to become bread because the day you meet Christ like Zacchaeus you will say I give up all that everything I have stolen from people I restore and I I give my money to the to the poor and I'm no longer going to do this work and this was grace in the flesh that's how people responded to Jesus but the devil said so that was the first attack. I didn't want to go into all of this. The first attack on Jesus was because the devil knew that without his death, there will be no life. For those who listened to my teaching yesterday, I told you the death of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, qualified him to be my redeemer and qualified me to be redeemed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I cannot go into it. You can get the teaching. The blood that is shed was the only qualification. Without sharing the blood, it could heal the sick. Without sharing the blood, it could raise the dead. It could multiply loaves. But he needed to shed the blood to take away enmity between man and God. And man to be brought back to the original intention of the divine order. And for man to be God's son again and to be the government of God on earth. That's redemption. And Jesus had to shed the blood. So the blood of Jesus Christ is the qualification of Jesus as redeemer. And the blood of Jesus Christ means another thing. That revelation, if you caught it yesterday, you have a key. A key against Satan every day, any day, anywhere. That if you are a child of God and you understand, when the thing, the same thing, the same qualification, qualification of Jesus as redeemer is the same qualification you have as a believer as the redeemed what makes him your redeemer what makes him qualified to redeem you is what makes you qualified to be redeemed that means no matter how bad you are by the blood of Jesus Christ you are qualified to be redeemed perfectly that's the core of the gospel that is why a thief on the cross while dying just guys said something today you will be with me where in paradise why he has shed the blood he was paying the price he will soon say it is finished and this man was the first believer all others who believe with jesus believe in jesus while he had not yet died Others believed in Jesus after he had died. But this man believed in Jesus while he was dying. And what is it that connects you 
With the blood of Jesus Christ, faith, just belief. That's all. Once you have, once you, you believe, the blood qualifies you for redemption, for restoration, for sanctification, for justification, for righteousness, for holiness, for healing, for every form of God's blessing in the package of Soteria that we call salvation. Just the blood. That is what qualified him as the redeemer. That is what qualifies everyone who turns to him by faith. Like that thief. Lord, remember me when you come again in your glory. That means I know your story does not end this way. I know there is a glory ahead of you. I know you are the son of God. I know who I am. I know I'm a robber, a criminal, doomed to die. I know my friend. I know what we do. But I know you are not one of us. You are separate. You are you, you are completely apart. You are holy. You are God. I don't know what you are doing here, except that you are an opportunity for me to be remembered. So, Lord, remember me when you come. He didn't tell him, I will remember you. He told him, I have remembered you today. You'll be with me. That man did not pay tithe, he was qualified by the blood. And a lot of people are happy. Go, Let me move on. Praise God, praise God. That man was not baptized. He was qualified by the blood. That man took no communion, but he had received the first and the last communion. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? But that is what the devil attacked didn't want him to die. He didn't want him to shed the blood so that he will not qualify me. So that I will still be the one struggling for my salvation. So that humanity will still be in the dungeon of trying to walk. Trying to find out how to relate with God. That's why the devil attacked the death of Jesus. Now let's look at another, another scripture. Matthew chapter 16 verse 21 to 23. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. From that time, after Peter revealed his understanding of the, the messianic nature, status, and call of Jesus. What I mean is that after you understood Jesus as the Messiah, the one who was to come, Jesus took advantage of them to teach them deeper things. Deeper things that they had not known. He said, you can know about Jesus as a bread giver, but you don't know him as the one who pays the price and qualifies you to be greater than Satan and greater than angels in the arrangement of God's salvation. That's what redemption does. I don't have time to go into teaching redemption. It's a deep thing. By the grace of God, we have comes in front of us. Easter come is my most exciting come. <laughs> when is next Easter? Is it next month? From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must say, say must. Everyone read it loud. Go. Just say must. I want to hear must. Everyone read it loud. Go. Must go to Jerusalem must suffer in Jerusalem many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and must be killed without option of fine or parole must no negotiation this is why he took flesh and had blood so that he will not be ashamed to call me his brother and then he will not be ashamed to die my death that's why that song, the song came up again I don't want to talk I don't want to comment amazing love how can it be that thou my God should die for me wow have you ever thought 
you about it? Amazing love. That thou, my God, would die for me. Oh, <laughs> it's everything. <laughs> ah, if you knew it, your life will never be the same. You will never be, you will never be stranded. You will never be, you will never be helpless. You will never be hopeless. You will never serve Satan. You will never serve man. And you will never commit suicide. And you will never give up. Why? Because in the midst of the, in the midst of almost landing in hell, and you remember, and he said, remember. Just remember. Do this to remember me. So all you need is to keep remembering. Oh, I remember. He died so that I will not die. Instantly you will be suspended. You will not land. And you say, Lord, I remember you died. Two of us will not die. I should have died, but you died. And your death is not in vain. I believe. It will be pulled back. It's called restoration. Now thou, my God, should die for me. Amazing. And I'm emotional. Now thou, that thou my God should die now listen the scripture we are not talking about that thou my God should die on earth that thou my God should die on the cross that's not it that thou my God should die now let me tell you what it means to die for stand for me oh Jackson I will not be there at that barrier please go and go there and stand for me honorable Adrian, please, I will not be there at the book launch represent me make a pleasure on my behalf I will honor it. <laughs> Means you carry my name. You carry my consent. Whoever insults you there had issues with me or has issues with me. Therefore, if I know the person, I can call up the person if somebody is attacking you. Hello, His Excellency. What happened, my brother? And you are calling me this morning. He say it's not as beautiful as it is in Aso Rock. Somebody that I sent to represent me somewhere has been kidnapped. You mean kidnapped? Let me call IG. Bring, bring, bring. IG, where are you? He said, I am in Saudi Arabia. Come back now. <laughs> but before you come back, call the IG investigation. Kidnapper's court. anti kidnapper's skinny. Squad, okay. Now, Tell your DIG to call my friend. My eight will send you the number. The entire forces of Nigeria is mobilized. Because somebody stood in for, for you. <laughs> die for me. Means I don't need to die. If you are standing for me, I don't need to be there. Ministers were standing in for me last night. I could have come to pray in the night, but I knew... I will not be able to, I need to recover. I'm now 55, I need long, I need a little bit additional few minutes. Dr. Ibutu is so happy, talking to Dr. Mando. Well, this thing is working. <laughs> Let's not find out whether it's working or not. <laughs> so, I told them, Jackson, uh, Deacon Jackson, set up, you heard what I talked about, the revelation and the direction or yeah, set up ministry. And I was praying. I set up music. I don't listen to ministry. If I am not there, I will not find out. I will not have, except by mistake, I hear something. So I will raise the volume of music in my own place to create an environment. I was praying. I need a personal encounter myself. As a minister, when I'm here ministering to you, when I pray, I'm ministering to myself. So I needed to pray, spend some hours to rest in order to recover enough to have optimum energy to minister to you. I have to prepare for you. Part of the preparation is good rest. So I cannot give you crumbs. I 
did not have to be here. If I told him, stand in for me and I come and sit down here. He was not standing in for me. He was ministering with me in attendance. It means if something is not going right, I can stop it. And quickly move on. And take over. Like what happened this morning? Few things were not going right. And I, stood, I didn't have to give instruction to somebody because I knew nobody will interpret what is in my spirit. So I had to go talk to this person, talk to this person, talk to this person, talk to this person, go and do this, go and do this. That's all. And the service changed. Because nobody was standing in for me. I represent myself here. So when you say you die for me, means instead of me dying, you die. Which means where is my death? My dead have been dealt with. There is no dead. So everyone who dies is dying an unnecessary, unreal death. It's a lie of the devil. Because the death of humanity had, had been settled in Christ. So when you believe him, instantly means you have passed from death to life. Death doesn't work again. Except you reject him and go back to the plan of devil. Because the devil came to steal, to kill, and to do what? The day you choose him and walk away from Christ by your choice and your action you meet the devil and the devil will fabricate death and give to you because he steals he kills and he does what? So for those who say once you are saved, you are saved forever just stay in Christ though. the day you go back to the devil by your action and your will he will make death available to you because he's the author of death but in Christ Jesus, you have escaped death. Stand up and shout. Say, my death had died. No, you are not shouting like it is true for you. Shout it for me. If it is not true for you, shout it is true for me. Say, my death had died. In vain is the devil planning for my death. Say, my death had been settled. And all the accessories of death have been settled. Fear has been settled. Sickness and diseases have been settled. Hell has been settled. It took my place. Now I am living in his place. Like, let's talk about died for me. Jackson and the other ministers stood in for me. They were ministering. And I rested for them. That's the minister instead of me. And I rested instead of them. So when somebody stands in for you, you enjoy the rest of that person. And when you somebody, when you stand in, okay, Jesus left glory and took your shame. He gave you right to sit in his place of glory. Because he stood in your place of death. So it's not just that he died for you, he gave you his own seat. And his own seat is life. And life is in the blood. That's why we talked about the administration of the, of the blood. Lift up your two hands, say thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands again, shout again. Say thank you, Jesus. You took my death. Gave me your life. Took my shame. Gave me your glory. You took my fears gave me your security you took my place and left your place for me you took my ancestry gave me your father you took my foul spirit gave me your holy spirit truly you are the redeemer I believe shout I believe I believe that when you die it was my death when you rose it was my resurrection your glory is now my glory because your father is my father your abba is my abba your spirit is my spirit your name is my name your title is my title where you belong i belong what can stop you will stop me what cannot stop you cannot stop me what can hinder you will hinder me you are not speaking what cannot hinder you will never hinder me for 
I am not living my life I am living your life be seated the devil hates those words the devil hates you to know those words and he makes sure that after you believe and say all of that you go and live your life and not his life <laughs> so you say you see he does not believe he's a liar and you say i'm the only liar he too lies he lives his own life according to how he wants marries as according to he, he he sleeps around drinks around does everything like every other person and claims that he has your life is that your life so the devil attacks consecration attacks holiness attacks righteousness attacks holiness because that's the life of god and grace preacher will tell you it doesn't matter you're already made righteous forever whatever you do does not change anything just make sure whatever you do does not put you in the does not put you in the direction of Satan. Because it is what Adam did that put him in the direction of Satan. Because he will fabricate death. Jesus had already died for you, and it's still true. But the devil will look for death because his work is to steal, to kill, and to do what? Destroy. <laughs> A believer who accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, who goes back to the ways of evil will find stealing, killing, and destruction. And that's hell. Say, that's what I teach. Tell anybody, that's the truth. If you don't believe in that, you don't sit in this congregation. Sincerely. You don't sit, we don't agree. We don't agree. This must be what you believed to qualify you to sit here and say, I'm your pastor. You cannot say anything I do. No matter what I do, it does not affect me. It's not true. I have studied the scripture by the grace of God. I have revelation. I have the grace of the Holy Spirit helping me. I have studied the life of Christians in every age till now. This is the truth. This is the truth. Jesus taught it. Say, cut it off. If your right hand, if your right hand, why should you cut it off? Because your right hand can make you lose life. That means it is possible to lose life. Okay. So from that time, Jesus began to teach them. What did he teach them? That he would suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised to the third day. Verse 22. Here Peter, who was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke wonderful things. Read verse 22. Everyone, please. Then P took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Next verse. See the reaction of Jesus. Jesus says, I am meek and humble of heart. Jesus had to teach me meekness. Meekness is not that you cannot get angry. Meekness is that you cannot use some hard words. That's not the meaning of meekness. Meekness means you cannot be angry for your sake. Meekness means you cannot use angry words for your sake. As a Christian, I have to study meekness because I get angry. So every time I'm, I am angry, I have to find out what am I angry. I'm not supposed to use my anger to defend my honor. When I do that, I lose something in meekness. When it comes to me, I should be able to easily forgive, let go. As long as the people are ready for it and all of that. But when it comes to God, I will never repent. I will never reconcile. So when somebody is on the other side, and I'm on this other side, and God is involved, the glory of God is involved, it is a fight that will never end. I don't know where I'm communicating. I had to learn meekness. So you see Jesus Christ the day how will a meek person carry whips and flock people in the temple? You, you, do you call that weakness? Meekness? It is meekness. Because he did not flock them in the temple because of himself. He flocked them. He said, how do you turn my father's house to a den of robbers? But the day a criminal slapped him that he should have used the anger 
and the power to defend himself. He did something that disarmed me. If I have offended you, tell me. But if I have not offended you, why did you slap me? God talking like that because it's about himself. The other one was about the glory of the Father. Shout, Aletheia. Absolutely. Absolutely. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me! That's too rare. So rare of the Son of God. So if you hear me say certain things, certain times, find out what is at stake. Find out. Find out. What is at stake? Just find out. These are principles. As a minister, by the grace of God, I've been given resources to administer. There are things I'm not, there are certain anger I'm not supposed, I feel guilty being angry in certain areas. So you call somebody, instead of waiting for the person, you call that person to deal with it. Because you know this was about you. But when it is about God, you let everything, lose everything, rather than reconcile with that issue. Because the glory of God is involved. Hallelujah. This is it. That's a core. These are bones in Christianity. These are bones. So with the grace God has given to me, authority. And so when we talk about authority, authority is real. Oh. A man one day will dedicate a child in this place. A man honored me in the school of the Holy Spirit. I've talked about how somebody just came new in the system, in the school of the Holy Spirit. One day came and gave me a gift. He and the wife. He said, my, my family, my marriage has turned around. Coming to the school of the Holy Spirit. My wife, my, our relationship, myself, uh, both of them. And I was so blessed. How many people, hundreds of people passed through the school of the Holy Spirit. How many people come to personally and left me, beautiful envelope, left. After some time, came with the entire family to show gratitude again. And I discovered he has only daughters. This was last year. And I sat down, I just had understanding in my spirit. I asked the, the youngest girl, will you want a brother? Receive your brother. The other girl, yes, I want receive your brother. Receive your son. Receive your son. And I released them and they went. Few months later, they came back to the office. Mama is pregnant. Number one, she's pregnant. So what is left now is to know whether the pregnancy is about what? About. Because they are all girls. So every time I see the woman, we say, God. <laughs> she. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes I don't see them. No. I hope they have given birth and have hidden from me because <laughs> dash, dash, dash. So was it yesterday? Came into the office, knelt down. Told me. This was this and that and that. It was difficult, it was challenging and all. The doctor had to, we did this. We didn't, we, we, instead of when the doctor said it would be 10 a.m., they now called me that it is done. And the next thing is to, so, so is it? <laughs> I carefully refuse to ask that question so that you don't wake up trouble. <laughs> Say a son has been given. <laughs> a son. And he said something. We were no longer hoping. We had reached a point and we gave up on that. So when we came, that's not what brought us. It was not in our mind in our imagination what happened authority that's it you have been given authority is the right to use power is the most that's what i told jackson this morning authority is the most dangerous power 
Authority can take somebody's life. A wrong, a hasty use of authority can take life. Or can, a proper use of authority can pray. So those who are called and who carry the grace, they may be weak. They may make mistakes. Be careful. As long as they still wield what? Also, they have been given permission to do things. So a family that had given up on having a male child and they have all girls and they didn't come to school of the Holy Spirit asking for that. They did not come to my office those two times. They just came to appreciate. First, husband and wife. Second, with the entire family, those who were available. And using authority and discernment of the Spirit to now see, oh, like Elijah, they don't, or Elisha, they don't, Elisha, they don't have a, they don't have a son. So he's the father of a boy. He will give his testimony, so I cannot give his details. They have to be preserved in the process of recovery and taking their children home. That's how it works. That's how it works. So a one with authority is to be very careful with the words, with what he does with it. It's very delicate. So when Jesus would say, get behind me, Satan, that was not careless. He recognized that the one who told him not to die has come again. Because, the, because Peter is saying, God forbid, you will not die. How can you die? No way. God forbid, God will fight your battle. You will not suffer. You will not die. That means he said you will not save Patrick. And Patrick will not preach the gospel. And just recognize it. Get up behind me, Satan. The third scripture I will give to you, I will not read. Matthew 27. No. The third scripture, Matthew 26. 36 to 39. Read that one. I'm already done with this teaching. It's longer than expected. Matthew 26. 36 to 39. You read that one. Let's talk about the attack on the resurrection. The attack on the resurrection. The attack on the resurrection is, from, is not from the devil directly. It's from the devil indirectly using the Jewish authority. It's not a proper full teaching otherwise. We'll go into scriptures and scriptures and scriptures but just want to draw something. Matthew chapter 27, 62 to 66. And you know if Jesus had not died, there would not be resurrection. So the devil was not interested in attacking the resurrection. The devil was interested in attacking what will lead to the resurrection. And when the devil could not stop him from dying, now, it's now second, it's now fighting what we call proxy, proxy, proxy battle. Proxy war. The war, war through others. Matthew 27, 62, 66. Be patient with this man. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees say with me, I am, I am free. Say the devil could not stop him from dying. So the devil could not stop him from qualifying me. Say the devil could not stop him from paying the price. Therefore, the devil cannot stop me from enjoying the price. The devil could not stop him from dying my death. Therefore, the devil cannot stop me from living his life. Rise to your feet and lift up your two hands. Say, devil, if you could stop him, then you can stop me. Since you could not stop him, get out of my side. Begin to rebuke Satan in your life. Get out of my side. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my mind. Get out of my house. Get out of my destiny. Get out of my call. Get out of my ministry. Get out of this GFCC. Get out of the men, the prevailing men, the prevailing women, the mighty men, the heirs of grace. Get out! You could not stop Jesus from paying the price. How can you stop me from enjoying the life? Say, I live the life of Jesus. I am healed in the life of Jesus. I am delivered in the life of Jesus. I am free in the life of Jesus. I am changed in the life of Jesus. 
I live by the life of Jesus. He died my death. Oh, uh -huh. death, you have lost me. You no longer have power. Satan, you cannot bring me down. I am born of God. I hope somebody here is speaking as a child of God. If you are not a child of God here, it starts with repentance. Starts with repentance. Repent of your sin and from your sins. And ask God for mercy. And accept Jesus as Lord. And the grace of the new life. I'm singing you this song. Waiting on the cross. <laughs> ah, ah, surrender <laughs> all to you. Be seated, be seated, be seated. All to you. On the next day, which followed the day of the prepar of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive, how that deceiver said that after three days. Uh, I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Finally said to them, you have a God. Go. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Why? Let us see how you will rise. You have died, you cannot rise. The attack on the resurrection. Why did the Jews attack the resurrection? Why did the devil attack the death? Why? The death will qualify him to be my redeemer and qualify me to be free. Qualify me to be redeemed, to be made a son of God, to be higher than him in the realm of the spirit and to be the governor over devil. Every child of God born again is constituted into a God over Satan. Therefore, he can say, get behind me and the devil will leave. And the devil hates it. And it's only by the death of Jesus Christ that that will happen. No miracle will bring about that. That's redemption. Redemption is buying back. Buying back into your place. So the devil hated that. And the resurrection will be a proof that truly this man has succeeded in the mission. Because the scripture says, for God will not allow his servant to see what? Corruption. So if the father allowed him to see corruption, it means he did not succeed. He said, it is written of me in the scrolls. I have come to do what? To do your will. So the resurrection is a proof that he did the will of the father. And the Jews will not allow that to happen. Because they said Jesus was a liar, an impostor. They said his death was the death of a criminal because he insulted God by saying he's a son of God. So resurrection will be a proof that the Jews are liars and that Jesus was the son of God and that what he came to do, he has done, that he has saved me. And if you accept him, he has saved you. So the Jews say no way because they knew if Jesus actually will rise, he will now become the Messiah that he said he is. That they said he is not. We say you are not. How can you say you are Messiah and you are like this? Messiahs are not supposed to be like this. So they didn't want to be wrong. They wanted Jesus to be wrong. So they attacked the resurrection. They secured the tomb. Let us see guards wait there. When he wants to come out, knock him, push him in. Read the rest of the scripture. You see how they push him in when he wanted to rise. <laughs> Matthew 28, praise God. I say praise God. Oh. Matthew 28, verse 11. I will soon be done. I'm actually done. 
Matthew 28 verse 11 to 15. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, while they were going, after Jesus had risen, oh, you can read from verse 1. You see how Jesus tried to come out and they knocked him in. Try find out that one. You will see it. You see it. But find out. But because they could not hold him and they could not stand him. Now while they were going because they had failed and the Lord had succeeded and he had proven that he's the father that sent him and he had paid the price and he qualified himself to be my redeemer and he qualified me to be redeemed to be the king over Satan to have power and authority to overcome all the powers of the enemy to trample upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy and nothing will harm me because he rose, he proved that when he paid the price, hell cannot stop him. That death cannot stop me. Sickness, disease, sin cannot stop me. So the guards were disappointed, so they went. Now, while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city and reported to the chief priest all the things that had happened. Okay, it was the women when they were going. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, Go back to verse 11. What did the guard say? The guard, what did they, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all the things that had happened. So you read from verse 1 to see the things that had happened. That in the morning the stone was rolled away by a mighty earthquake beyond their power. Shout hallelujah. That is the same power that is at work in every believer. Earthquake rock shattering tomb opening power when they had assembled with elders and consulted together they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers saying tell them his disciples came at night and stole him you hear while you were sleeping you hear and he said but you know we are not supposed to sleep in the night and if this comes to the governor's ears you hear that you were sleeping in the night and they came and stole him you hear we will appease him and make you secure. You hear? Why are you telling all of this? We don't want them to know that he rose from the dead. His rising from the dead is a proof that he's the redeemer. That he's the Messiah who was to come. He's going to give power to people in every generation, in every continent, in all the nations. It means we Jews will lose our special place. Don't allow it happen. Tell them. Next verse. So they took the money. Who will not take the money? And did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews. Until when? Till this day. So they are still waiting for their Messiah. Because they cannot accept the resurrection. Acts chapter 4. Verse 1 to 4. The last scripture for the day. Thank God. Oh, praise God. Glory to God. The last scripture for this morning. Acts 4, verse 1 to 4, still on the attack. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the people, this is talking about Peter, John, the rest of the apostles. This is talking about the apostolic movement. Those who were preaching that Jesus is a proof that the Father has forgiven, that the Father has delivered, the Father has redeemed, that sickness no longer has final power, the devil, witchcraft, ancestral power, they no longer have control over those who are redeemed for there is now therefore no more condemnation on those who are in Christ Jesus. Now as they spoke to the people, ah, that if the power of him that raised Christ from the dead, if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in thee, ah, he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken thy mortal body. The power of the resurrection. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. You, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus. What? That was the problem of the authorities. He should not. He died. He did not rise. Why did they? Why did they attack? Why did the, did the devil attack the death? Because he didn't want me to have the life of God. He didn't want me to be redeemed, to be delivered. He didn't want somebody who is in addiction to be delivered. He didn't want somebody to be delivered from the marine, from witchcraft. 
The devil didn't want to lose his captives. He didn't want to lose his praise. The devil didn't want to lose families to us, to see families delivered, marriages restored, five lives changed. The devil hated that people will be free, that a useless boy will become a man that will speak usefulness and blessing and value to people, that the helpless and the hopeless will become the joy of others, that the stone that the builders rejected will become the chief cornerstone. The devil hated that, and the Jews will not love to see that this Jesus that they rejected and accepted Barabbas, this Jesus that they condemned and walked up the crowd to demand for his death, this Jesus that they put pressure on the king, to the, the governor to sentence to death and to have him killed, that this Jesus had defied death and rose, thereby proving that he's the Messiah, thereby proving that if I fall, I will rise again, thereby proving that when they say, when they say there is a casting down, So that my enemy will not gloat over me. Because when I fall, I will rise. So that when, I seek, I can, when I'm sick, I can recover. So that when I speak to somebody who is sick and say, rise! Somebody will rise because resurrection means anastasis. Anna. Anna. The word Anna means up again. So resurrection means up it means when the devil has done everything to bring your power, your bring your business, to bring your health back, because of the price he paid in the resurrection, up. When everything has been done to shatter your mar your marriage and to scatter your children, and because you remember Christ died for you and you accepted his death, the resurrection means what? Up. Marriage is up again. Business is up again. That's the meaning of resurrection and anastasis. Anastasis means up again. Up after decay. Up after shame. So as a child of God, after all the mess, there is the up part of it. After all the sickness, there is the up part of it. After you have made a mistake, there is the up part of it. That is why the Jews are not happy with the resurrection. And the devil is not happy with the death. Because the death qualifies you to be up again. When they say you are used the dead says you can be up again. When they say you are helpless, the dead is saying you can be up again. When you are rejected, oh, the dead will say, oh, you can be up again in acceptance. The womb can be up again. Finance can be up again. Righteousness can be up again. Holiness can be up again. Marriage can be up again. That's the meaning of resurrection. And the devil hates you to come up again. The devil just wants you to fall. But resurrection says, after you have fallen, up again. The resurrection says, uh, the devil says, attack him. Attack his health. Jesus qualified you by his blood. For the resurrection to tell you what? Up again. So I come into your family. If you are a child of God, by the qualification of the blood of Jesus, whatever had been damaged in your life, I speak up again. I speak up again. I speak up again. I speak upon your child. Since your child was born, there is no preparation to start life. If you believe in Jesus, by the qualification of the blood that makes you a candidate of redemption, by the qualification of the blood that makes me a minister of the gospel, by the resurrection, I speak to your child up again. I speak to your business up again. I speak to your consecration up again. I speak to your ministry up again. I speak to your calling up again. I speak to your office up again. I speak to your hope up again. Rise to your feet, say, I am up again. Keep speaking, I am up again. Every child of God speaking, I am up again. I am up. Anna. Anastasis. <laughs> I am up. After fear, I am up. After shame, I am up. After defeat, I am up. After trouble, I am up. After crisis, I am up. After fear, I am up. After worries, I am up. After 
anxiety i am up who is speaking say i am up 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 the resurrection is the reward to jesus but the resurrection is a proof that i have been saved is a proof that the blood of jesus has saved me is a proof that the blood of jesus has healed me be up again be up again if you are in this place and you don't know jesus it's time to be saved it's time to rise up rise up into new life rise up into new life rise up it's time to rise up in the name of jesus Christ. let's make this intentional confession i'm done stretch your hand towards me eyes close eyes closed everyone whether you have been through the camp or you are just hearing me for the first time or you are a member of this church but you didn't come through the camp I want to speak to those who are taking decision for the first time for Jesus those who are taking decision to accept Jesus to accept the blood is shed for their own personal forgiveness and salvation so that the death of Jesus will cancel the plan of Satan in their life and the life of Jesus will give them a new life wherever you are open your mouth and speak audibly to God between you and God say Lord Jesus Christ secondarily everyone in this place who is a child of God especially those who have gone back to the ways of sin or those who are standing the scriptures say, let the one who stands take heed, lest he falls. Every day is an opportunity for confession and dedication. Therefore, all hands lifted, eyes closed. And you're going to speak as if this is the first and the last time. You're going to believe with your heart and speak with your tongue. And then salvation will be affirmed for those who are already in the, in the faith. You strengthen yourself by this confession. And for those who are relapsed to former things, it's going to be an opportunity to come back. For those who have never taken this decision, heaven is welcoming you to the new life. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe. I didn't hear. I want to hear it resound and clear. Resounding and clear and intentional. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. It was for my sake you took the flesh. The eternal word of God became flesh. For me. For me. For my sake you were rejected. So that I can be accepted by the Father. For me. For me. For my sake you were nailed to the cross in order to pay for all my debts and cancel all the punishment that I deserve you did it for me for me for my sake you bled and died and you said it is finished the father accepted the sacrifice and forgave me I come now for that forgiveness. I turn from my ways. Sinful ways. At this point, if there is any sin you want to confess between you and God, say something to God. Confess a sin. Scripture says, anyone who says, if we say that we are not sinners, make God into a liar. Whoever will acknowledge his sin and confess his sin. Because God is faithful there will be forgiveness because God is faithful mention something as you confess say I forsake this 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 I let go this I let go that I let go this other one. I let go this other one. I let go. I let go. I let go. 
and let go. Mention them and let go. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I turn my heart to you. I embrace you by faith in the exchange of salvation. By this confession, I accept that you took my place. You bore my guilt, took my sickness, took my guilt, took my shame, took my ancestral issues and every curse associated with my life. You gave me your father. I accept your father as my father. You gave me your spirit. I accept your spirit, the Holy Spirit, as my spirit. You gave me your own life. Now I accept your own life. I accept your own life as my own life. I accept your hearts because you have taken my heart. I accept your mind. I let go my former mind. I accept your way. I let go my own way. I accept your inheritance, your portion in the Father, your blessings, your wealth, your honor, your excellence, your wisdom, your knowledge. I give up my own, ex my own inheritance, all the things of my Father, the things of my generation, things that people suffer in my generation, I am free from it. Things that people suffer in my territory, I am free from it. Things that people suffer in my lineage, in my ancestry, I am free from it. The death of my father is no longer my death. The life of my father is no longer my life. The curse of my mother is no longer my own. The sickness of my mother is no longer my own. The troubles of my ancestors do not come to me. Because the glory of God has come to me. Through the only Son of God. Say from today, I declare that the Father has qualified me to enjoy the inheritance of the saints in life. The boundary lines have fallen onto me in beautiful places, in healthy places, in healthy places, in beautiful places, in wise places, in glorious places, in holy places, in righteous places. Mention where the lines have fallen onto you. In marital places, in fruitful places, in joyful places. Declare, I am free from depression. The things that held me back no longer have power. Open your mouth and declare. This is deliverance taking place. This is forgiveness taking place. This is salvation. Mary, can you come up here? Can the ministers come up here? Lift up your voice and speak. The grave that have been dug for me, you no longer have power over me. The shame that has been prepared for me, you no longer have power over me. All the ministers come up here. The disgrace, the disaster, the anxiety, the trouble. Halabosha tapralata. Mande ketele brasota. Mande ketele mondo prekata. Amazing love. I can't be. Is that the right key? That thou, my God, should die for me. Amazing love. I can't be. It's time to speak. That thou, my God, should die for me. Wherever you are, the doors are open for me in the place of life. The portion of Jesus is my portion. What belongs to Jesus belongs to me.